Let's start the 2016 paper two, right? What's always important, read your instructions, right? Um, lots of pieces of information here. Biggest thing is to make sure you have your annexures, show all your calculations, start each question on a new page, and then also only round off your final answers, right? And let's now just jump into it and get going. So I did not put mine back to back, so I'm just wasting here, but yours will be back to back. Let's jump into it. A company installed computers at a computer center in October 2015. The manager used a bank account to pay the employees wages for the project. Pretty standard. Below is a comparison of the cash withdrawal fee structures of two banks in 2015 and the percentage changes in fees from 2014, as well as the calendar for October 2015. So there's a lot of information, right? And students often when they see this, they're like, oh, I don't know what's going on. That's okay. Remember the questions help us like decipher what the information is saying. So there's banks X, there's bank X, banks Y, right? And here is a 2015 fee and it talks about the change from the 2014 fee. And then we have a calendar here, okay? So let's just go and read what's going on. Importantly, employees do not work over weekends. That's lovely, right? The way it should be. But let's read through what is being done here. 1.1.1. Okay, well, first he says, use the table in the calendar above to answer the following questions. Determine the probability of randomly selecting a work day in October 2015 with a day that is an even number. Okay, so even, 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 even. Okay, so remember even, a number is even if it can be divided by two, right, without a remainder. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so there's eleven that are even, right? Basically, they can be divided by two and there'd be nothing left, right? So if I said 18 divided by two, it would give me nine, right? Every number that isn't even is odd by definition, right? So it can't be divided by two without having a remainder. Let's see how many um, odd ones there are. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So there's eleven odds and eleven evens. Wonderful, right? So in total, there's twenty-two days. Eleven of them are odd. Eleven of them are even. It asks us for the probability of randomly selecting a workday in October, which is even. So we're going to say question one, right? Question one, starting on a new page. One point one point one. Eleven ways of being even, right? And there's twenty-two different days we can choose from. Um, and that is 1 over 2 or 0 0.5 or 50%. Now, you could be saying, yo, Molly, how did you do that? Well, you can actually just do this all on your calculator. So 11 over 22, right? That's where we've got 1 over 2. Press this little button, S to D, right? 0 0.5. If you want to make it a percentage, we always times by 100 and it's 50%. So you can write it as any of those answers. Okay, let's move on to the next question. So this is sort of like your first question. So a lot of this is sort of not basic, but it's it's fairly um, sort of intuitive how to go about it. 1.1.2 says, give one valid reason why a company will not necessarily use a bank offering the lowest bank charges. Okay, well, there's various reasons, right? It might be convenient. Um, it might be closer to them. Um, there might be loyalty, etc. So there's many things you can say. Um, you can say convenient, um, loyalty, Right, just spell it out a little bit. So say it's convenient and that it's close to them, or they've been banking with them for a while. Um, loyalty could be, you know, they they um, uh, the bank has treated them well, given them a good loan, etc. Various things like that. As long as you make sure that it makes common sense, right, or makes sense, um, you'll get the mark there, or two marks there. Okay, now we're moving into a bit of calculation error territory. Okay, no calculation error, just territory. So it says, determine the missing value of A. Now, whenever they give you a missing value, like you can see up here, right, you know pretty much that they're going to ask you to calculate it. So that's not unheard of, right? Completely expected. So it says, determine the missing value of A, round it off to one decimal place, if the 2014 withdrawal fee was equal to this, okay? You may use this formula, okay? Now, I'm just going to get my highlighters here because I think this is often where students are like, oh. I don't know what is going on. And this is quite a big question, right? You don't want to mess it up. So basically comparing this, right, which is 2014, just so that we are with it, right, to this up here, right, which is for A, which is, let's just check here, is that one, okay? So we're comparing that. So let's see and make sure that we know what's going on. How did I know it was this one? Remember, because A is for that bank. Okay, so we're comparing those two using this formula. 
Okay, so firstly, it says here we want to compare the 2015 fee for a um, thousand rand, which we actually know is 15.5 because they've given that to us up here. So that's actually fine. We know what that is. But this is where it's a bit tricky. So it says, let's figure that out. So let's figure out what this rand amount is from here and then plug it in here, get our percentage, and then we're done, right? So let's make sure that we're doing that correctly, okay? So if I withdrew 1,000 Rand, okay? If I withdrew 1,000 Rand, I would pay 3.5 Rand, because that's what it says, 3.5 Rand, plus 1.1% times 1,000 Rand, right? That's what it's saying, right? The withdrawal amount is 1,000. That's what this formula is saying. So let's go plug that into our calculator and see what the charge is. So 3.5 Rand plus... 1.1% times 1,000, and that will give me 14.50 Rand, okay? So that is what it will cost me in 2014, okay? So that's 2014. So now we have 2015 and we have 2014, so we A for away. So we're going to say, just so that you're with me, so we're going to say 15,5 over 14,5, because we just worked that out, minus 1 times 100. So we're going to put that in. 15.5 over 14.5 minus 1. Remember the brackets, right? Students often forget these brackets, okay? Minus 1. So then we say 15.5 over 14.5 minus 1. Now, after just telling you to remember your brackets, your girl Margie just forgot them. So that's a little bit tricky. But anyways, now I fixed it, right? Don't put this percentage sign in there. Percentage sign just means that your answer is a percentage. Don't put the percentage in, just put 100. And your answer there is 6.89655, right? Now, did it say how many decimal places it wanted? It did, it said one decimal place. So let's round it off. Remember when we're looking at one decimal place, we look at the second decimal, say, is it about five? It is. So the answer here, and you can do little squiggly brackets, little squiggly equal signs is 6.9%, right? So that's the answer there is basically saying, what is the change in fee, right, from 2014? Well, the change in fee is 6.9%, so it's gone up quite a bit, okay? Let's move on to our next question. 1.1.4. The company withdrew 15,000 Rand for the weekly wages every Friday. The financial officer stated that the company would have saved more than 90 Rand um, I'm not sure why I put so much emphasis there, <laughs> in withdrawal fees if they had used Bank Y rather than Bank X for the full withdrawals. Verify whether the statement is valid. Now, what's important here, and students often forget this, you need to say whether the statement is valid or not once you've finished doing your calculations. Some students do the calculations and they do it so well, beautiful, but then they don't actually say what it means, right? Remember, maths is only useful if it tells us something, right? So you need to tell the story that the maths is telling you. So let's go and work it out for Bank Y and for Bank X, okay? So, of course, always write in the right question reference. Um, so let's work for bank X. Okay, so for bank X, we're going to have 3 rand 95 plus 1.30. It says per 100. Okay, so now we need to make sure, right? So it's paying, you're paying that per 100, but how many hundreds are there in 15,000? So you need to say 15,000 like this, and you need to divide it by 100. Right, so that's how many hundreds there are in 15,000. Right, so you're gonna have that three comma uh, three point one point three rand times 150 because it's not one comma three times the 15,000 because it's not for every rand, it's only for every hundred. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug that in and we're gonna say 3.95 right plus one comma three times 150. Okay, and your answer there is 198.95. Nine five, okay. So that's your answer there. But what's important here is remember this is weekly, okay. So we don't want the weekly amount; we want the um monthly amount. So because it's in weekly wages, so now we have to times this amount by four, right? Because we want it per month. So this is per week, and this is now going to be per month, okay. So we're going to say one nine eight point nine five, and we're going to times by four because the assumption is generally that you have four weeks, four um weeks in a month. Okay, um, and I mean, they didn't state otherwise, but that is generally the assumption that we make. So we're going to take this times it by four, and our answer is 795,8. So that's the total amount, 795,80. Okay, and that's what we're going to pay for bank X. Now we need to do the same thing, but now for bank Y, right? Because in, for bank Y, 
it has a different charging structure. So it says here that we have 4 Rand plus 1,15% 1, of the withdrawal amount. The withdrawal amount being 15,000, right? So we're going to say here, okay, and this is per week again. We have 4 Rand plus 1.15% 1, times 15,000, okay? Put that into our calculator. Be sure to type it in correctly. Don't be like me when I get things wrong all the time. And the answer there is 176, 176.50, okay? Again, you've now worked this out for a week, but you want to work it out per, per month because that's what it said, right? It says that this, this financial officer said they could have saved 90 Rand, right, for the four withdrawals. Oh, that's good, actually, look there. They told you exactly that it's four withdrawals in a month, right? So be careful to read your answers carefully. So we're gonna say 176.50, we're gonna times it by four. So what's there? Times by four, so it's going to be 706, right? And that's what's gonna be for bank Y. So now we have to say, well, what was the difference between those two, right? Because that's what it's saying. It's saying, did we actually, if we hadn't been with bank um, Y as opposed to bank X, would we have saved 90 Rand? Okay, or with this client, this company have saved 90 Rand. So you have to say 795.80 and you have to minus off or subtract off. So that would be bank X and that would be bank Y, right? So you have to take that and see what the difference is. So 795.80 minus 706, um, right? And your answer there is... 89 Rand and 80. Remember, always two decimal places. Now, obviously, that's very close to 90. But what did the financial officers say? They would have said more than 90. So it's not, not, it's close to 90, but it's not more than 90, right? So we say, therefore, so now we've done all the calculations, but please answer. Therefore, financial officer is wrong, right? So you have to finish off the thought there. It's wrong. And that is us done. Seven marks. It's quite a big question. I think, I mean, it's quite a large, meaty question for uh, an early question in the paper. But again, not beyond you. Okay? So just think logically, work clearly, and you should get those seven marks. Let's finish off this question as well as the video. It says, calculate an employee's total monthly wage if he earned this much per week in October, assuming that the company was not absent and did not work overtime, assuming the employee was not absent and did not work overtime in the month. Okay, now this is a bit tricky because, yeah, he works four full months, but he also works these two months here. I mean, these two days. Okay, so he works these four weeks, right? I'm mixing up all my days and months and weeks here, but he works four weeks. Look, one week, two week, three week, four week, and then he earns um, money or he works in for a further two days. So we need to account for the whole thing because it says his total monthly salary, okay? So it's easy enough to now work some of this out. So we're gonna say, okay, well, four, right? And this is for the weeks, the full weeks we know. 2142.85, okay? Four times 2142.85, so we do that. And that gives me 8571.40. So that's what he earns for these three, these four weeks here. So we've accounted for that, okay? But now we need to account for these two, okay? So we need to account for these two and we're gonna keep going there and just check whether we understand how we're gonna do that. So now this amount that he earns in a week, right? He's not gonna earn that full amount. He's only gonna earn two over five of that amount, okay? So we need to be careful there. So what we're gonna say is we're gonna say, okay, what is two over five times this? Okay, because only two of the five days. That's what he would have earned for five days. It's only two of the five days. So we put that into our calculator. Two over five times two, one, four, two, comma, eight, five. And we have that amount there. Okay, so now we have to add those two together because that's what he would have earned in the month. So we say that plus eight, five, seven, one, point four, zero. And that is what he would have earned in total. So we add those together. So in total, he would have earned this in a month. Okay, so be careful there. Here they're testing your understanding of weeks and months, but also your understanding of fractions, right? So that should help you get your final answer. That's our sound for the video. Um, and we'll move on to the next question.